I have been playing video games for 25 years, and one thing that never fails to happen is that there are video games that fail to meet expectations. This can happen for a wide variety of reasons, ranging from overhyped marketing to executives releasing unfinished games. You know, some examples are Fallout 76, No Man's Sky, Cyberpunk 2077. This has become a part of video games and something that I feel like I just have to accept. However, there is something worse than a game failing to meet expectations, and that's a game that fails to meet its own potential. If you were to ask me a couple years ago which game I thought failed to meet its potential, I would have said Fallout New Vegas. I'm not saying I hate Fallout New Vegas. On the contrary, it's one of my favorite games. It has an engaging story, fun gameplay, and great RPG elements. Unfortunately, it was also plagued by bugs and performance issues, which downgraded Fallout New Vegas from a 9.5 to an 8.4. If you get that joke, you pass the test. All of this was because Fallout New Vegas had an 18 month development cycle, and I really can't help but wonder what might have happened if Bethesda would have given Obsidian another 6 months to properly polish the game. But over the last year, a new game has come to mind when I think of missed potential in video games. And that game is Silent Hill Homecoming. Full disclosure, I'm a bit new to the Silent Hill franchise. Growing up, I wasn't really a fan of the survival horror genre, and what little interest I had was given to the Resident Evil franchise. However, over the last year, several YouTubers I like, creators like Max Starrett, Totally Pointless TV, and Boulder Punch, brought the Silent Hill franchise to my attention, and I found myself enthralled, not only by an amazing story and concepts, but also by fans who have so much love and admiration for this franchise. Unfortunately, there is a wide-held belief that the Silent Hill franchise is a franchise that's in decline, and it's been in decline since Silent Hill 4. And there's no denying it, Silent Hill Homecoming is a game that's mediocre at best. The combat is okay, but it's not very smooth. Usually you just spam attacks on enemies, or they spam attacks on you and kill you. There are massive performance issues, so much so I often found myself desperately looking for a save point. Not because the game was difficult, but because I was worried the game was going to crash and I'd lose all my progress. The character models also look really outdated. Silent Hill Homecoming was released in 2008. It's about three to four years after games such as Metal Gear Solid 3 and Resident Evil 4. And it's also an entirely new console generation as well. So it's quite ridiculous that some of these models looked as bad as they do. And most importantly, the story was a huge disappointment. Silent Hill Homecoming paled in comparison to stories in earlier entries, and one of the things that makes this such a big disappointment is that Silent Hill Homecoming has the basis for an amazing story at its core. There were also a bunch of um, interesting themes that would have been fun to explore. The game just simply failed to execute on what it was trying to deliver. Which brings me to this video. I want to re-examine critical parts of Silent Hill Homecoming and try to fix various elements of the plot. I also want to rewrite the script for various parts of the game, but those will be in different videos if I decide to do those. This video will focus on fixing three different elements of Silent Hill Homecoming. I believe these three changes would dramatically improve Silent Hill Homecoming's story, and hopefully by the end of this video, I can you know, have you see the potential that I saw in this game, which is a successful western adaptation in the Silent Hill franchise. But before I get started, I want to ensure that everyone has a pretty good understanding of Silent Hill Homecoming's plot, so people will understand my changes. I could do a review myself, but there are reviewers who are far superior to me in this regard. Totally Pointless TV did an excellent review, so if you want to refresh your memory of Silent Hill Homecoming's plot, uh, I recommend his video. I'll put a link in the description with that. Now, let's get started. The first change that I would make is that there would be no plot twists in Silent Hill Homecoming. A reoccurring problem with Silent Hill Homecoming is that it tries and fails to be Silent Hill 2. In Silent Hill 2, the reveal that James Sunderland killed his wife and suffered a mental break is one of the most iconic plot twists in video games, and the story of Silent Hill 2 is one reason why the game is seen as one of the best games in the series. The game gives a perfect amount of mystery and ambiguity that really makes the player want to discover the truth behind the story. One of the biggest mysteries was Maria. It wasn't exactly clear who or what she was or what her true intentions were. 
Dubus Goobus actually did a really funny video on this. You look exactly like my wife. Are you really Mary? I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'm, I don't know. What? I'm actually dead. I mean, I'm not dead. Who knows? Who knows if I'm dead? I don't know. It's a yes or no question. I'm not following. <laughs> What are you doing? You're crazy, James! Or maybe I'm crazy! Or maybe I'm messing with you! What could it be? It could mean anything! The plot twist of Silent Hill Homecoming is similar to the plot twist of Silent Hill 2. You find out that the protagonist is crazy, the person you are looking for is dead, and the protagonist has something to do with that person's death. In Silent Hill 2, you knew from the start that Mary was dead. But there was certainly something strange going on. And maybe by the end of it, you could find Mary or maybe another version of her waiting for James. And throughout Silent Hill 2, James can get small hints and clues that encourage him to keep pushing forward. Whether it's a mannequin with Mary's outfit, or finding out that Mary hasn't been dead for three years. Even early on, the player can infer that something is off with James. In an early conversation with Angela, James says he doesn't care for his personal safety. James also seems quite detached. The best example of this is the iconic scene where James is touching his face in front of a mirror. It's as if he's trying to see if he's actually real. The ambiguity of James in Silent Hill 2 allows for the plot twist to enhance an already amazing story. The plot twist in Silent Hill Homecoming is similar to Silent Hill 2. Alex discovers that his brother, Joshua Shepard, the person he's been trying to find since the beginning of the game, is in fact dead. That Josh died in a boating accident several years ago and that Alex was responsible for it. You also find out that Alex is not a military veteran. He had a mental break when his brother died. He had been in a mental hospital this whole time, and his military service is a figment of, an, of his imagination, a projection of his ideal self. However, these revelations not only fail to meet the level of Silent Hill 2, but they actively hurt the story of Silent Hill Homecoming by adding many plot holes. How did Alex get out of the hospital? He's still delusional, so they didn't just let him out. Unless the hospital ending is the real ending, in which case, you know, the entire story was all in Alex's head, and the game was just a giant middle finger to the audience. So what you're saying is that what you experienced in the simulation didn't really happen or even matter? Yes, that's correct. So it was sort of like a dream? No, it was a simulation. Yes, but theoretically, if someone watched the events of that simulation from start to finish only to find out that none of it really happened. I mean, you don't think that would be just like a giant middle finger to them? Well, hopefully they would have enjoyed the ride. I don't know, man. I think you piss a lot of people off that way. Also, if Alex isn't a veteran, where did he get the outfit from? Did he knock over an army surplus store after breaking out of the hospital? And how is he so effective in combat? And finally, why doesn't anybody close to Alex tell him that Josh is dead or missing? It can be inferred that a significant amount of time has passed. Even if there was a cover-up of Joshua's death, it's a bit of a stretch to say that no one would have noticed. Say what you will about America, but you know when a child goes missing, people tend to notice and start asking questions. So there were no classmates or teachers or friends that noticed Josh was gone? And people who did know that Josh was dead never told Alex. In the first part of the game, Alex talks to his mom. The game tries to get past this by saying she's mentally unwell and you know, possibly in denial, but it's a bit of a stretch to say that she didn't know Josh was dead. And the worst offender was Alex's conversation with his dad. Instead of his father saying, Alex, Josh has been dead for a long time, you need to get out of here, he remains ambiguous and says things like, you can't save Josh, leading Alex to believe that Josh is still alive. This shows that these plot twists were harmful to the story and unnecessary. Silent Hill 3 didn't have a major plot twist like that. At the end of the game, you didn't find out that Harry Mason was actually alive and that he faked his death and was working with Claudia the whole time. You know, that he always hated Heather and was a cult member throughout Heather's childhood and was just waiting to get rid of her. You know, something like that didn't happen. They, they played that game pretty straight. Sure, there were a few scenes that gave the typical mystery and ambiguity of a Silent Hill game. You know, the most concerning scene was Vincent's scene where he said, Monsters? They looked like monsters to you? Making it sound like Heather might have been killing innocent people this whole time. Uh, but in my rewrite of Silent Hill Homecoming, there wouldn't be a plot twist. Alex Shepard would be an actual soldier on leave from the United States Army. 
his brother Joshua is still alive and would still be the main objective for Alex in the story. Alex's military contract would be ending, and he wants to take Joshua away from his parents. But because there hasn't been a sacrifice from the Shepherd family, everything goes south. These changes would be a good step of preparing the story for Silent Hill Homecoming, which leads me to the second thing to fix. The second change that I would make is changing Alex Shepard. There's a lot of potential for someone like Alex Shepard in the Silent Hill franchise. Having to face an entity that uses trauma against you is you know, a scary prospect. And Alex could act as a beacon for the Silent Hill entity with all the trauma he could have. Like I said before, in this rewrite, there is no plot twist. Alex is a soldier, and there are a lot of themes that you could explore with this. One of the obvious themes is post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, something that's common among soldiers. One way this game could explore this is by having segments of the game where the pacing is dialed up to 11. Enemies are coming quick, Alex is fighting them, but they keep coming. In these segments, Alex's health and damage are buffed, but enemies are more numerous and aggressive. Everything from the music, to the environments, to the enemy types, even Alex's reactions will scream fast pace. This is to simulate how a soldier's mind is constantly racing on the battlefield. Another theme that could be explored is the Heart of Darkness. If you ever read Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, you will know that this refers to the primal and cruel part of human nature. The part of human nature that is still cruel and awful despite being civilized. The difference being that in Heart of Darkness, Kurtz's cruelty was so that he could get his hands on more of that precious ivory. This part of Alex will come from his desire to stay alive on the battlefield, but he has to change himself in order to survive. I've seen interviews of soldiers saying that it wasn't simply the horrors of war that was traumatic, it was the realization of what they were truly capable of doing in order to survive that caused so much trauma. For Alex, this can be demonstrated by showing he has anger issues beneath the surface. It can come to light when interacting with his parents, or when he's fighting to protect the people he cares about. This aspect of Alex could even manifest itself as the ultimate shadow for the hero to overcome. The final traumatic aspect of Alex is his childhood trauma. Sano Homecoming hinted at this by showing Alex's parents neglecting him, but they didn't really go into enough detail about it. In my rewrite, the story really steers into Alex's childhood trauma, showing evidence of emotional abuse and neglect when Alex was young. As Alex got older, he started to rebel against his parents. In some instances, Alex's dad may have gotten physical with him. Getting out of that abusive environment could have been Alex's main reason for joining the army. It was his fastest way to get out. I think bad parenting is something that many people can relate to today. Hell, parents today will kill their kids for 100 likes on Instagram, or Facebook, depending on how old the parent is. <laughs> but as a result of this trauma, Alex didn't want to be around anybody when he was growing up. He grows up as an outcast with only a few friends. There are only two people who seem to care for Alex, Elle and Josh. Elle could be a close friend or girlfriend acting as one of the few people who were good to Alex. Maybe she helped Alex while he was trying to get into the army. She could have taken him to the recruiter, helped him study for the ASVAB, or drove him to MEPS. Josh also loved Alex. Being the younger brother, Josh looked up to Alex and idolized him, creating a strong brotherly bond between the two. That bond is why Josh is the primary objective in the game. Instead of Alex randomly worrying about Josh and going home to see him, Alex wants to take Josh away from his parents since his contract with the army is almost up. Alex wants to take Josh to another city where Alex has several potential jobs lined up so he can support the two of them. This is designed to give Alex clear motivation and lets the audience see what it is he's trying to achieve. And it also elevates the importance of Elle and Josh, showing why these two characters mean so much to him and why Alex is willing to go through so many monsters in order to keep the two of them safe which leads me to the final change. The third thing that I would change in Silent Hill Homecoming is the enemies. In truth, I don't have much of an issue with the monsters of Silent Hill Homecoming. In fact, some of the game's best elements are from the boss fights. My personal favorite is the Scarlet Doll fight. 
The rigid movement of the doll suits its creepy design, and as the fight progresses, the eerie music gains momentum in the background. It really does make for an engaging fight. And the regular monsters aren't bad either. I think Silent Hill Homecoming is trying to go for a more generalized form of terror, meaning that the entity is looking to punish an entire population of people rather than a handful, so the monsters are not unique to everyone. It kind of looks like what the monsters did in the first Silent Hill. An obvious change that I would make is to get rid of Pyramid Head. It makes zero sense for him to be in this game. I've heard some people say that it's not supposed to be Pyramid Head, but a local boogeyman. Well, get rid of 3D Triangle Cabeza. If you want a boogeyman, make an original monster. The other monster that I would maybe get rid of is the nurses. In Silent Hill Homecoming, it kind of makes sense to have nurses because Alex is a mental patient. And this can reflect Alex's attitude toward some of the hospital staff. But in my rewrite, Alex isn't a mental patient. So if there isn't a hospital sequence, then you really don't need the nurses. And if the nurses did come back, you can tone them down a little bit. You don't need to make the monster seem so enticing. No! 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 I've got to get Dr. Evil! I've got to get Dr. Evil! <laughs> but on a serious note, the biggest issue that I have with the enemies is that there's no central enemy no ultimate obstacle to overcome. In the hero's journey, this is called the shadow. Silent Hill 2 had Pyramid Head. I know that Mary or Maria was the last fight, but Pyramid Head was James's ultimate test. Silent Hill 3 had Claudia. What did Silent Hill Homecoming have as the shadow? An insane Judge Holloway who turns bad at the last minute? Junkyard Curtis who is angry about how badly people treat nice things. A knocked up mechanical spider monster. A good shadow could be a manifestation of Alex's dark side. The part of him that he had to become in order to survive on the battlefield. An idea that I had was that the manifestation could take the form of a twisted Valkyrie. It would be an interesting reflection of Alex's time on the battlefield. And maybe as a way to subvert expectations... The monster doesn't always have to be a threat or danger to Alex. Maybe there are situations where the manifestation would kill some of the cultists. The scene where the cultists take Alex's mother comes to mind. Or the monster could even help Alex in some situations, because that side of Alex is what kept him alive during his military service. But it would be the final boss fight that Alex would have to face. Alex would fight the monster after Ellen and, and or Josh would be safe depending on the player choice. The final battle would take place in a dark place, a place where there'd be no escape for Alex, and he only has two choices, live or die. And if Alex loses, there are no retries. You get one of the bad endings if you fail. These were just a couple of changes that would improve the story of Silent Hill Homecoming. I have a couple of ideas for rewriting specific scenes from Silent Hill Homecoming, and I'll probably try to make a video of how I would rewrite the introduction in the next couple days. But I really want to know what you guys think about these changes, and if you think it would improve the story of Silent Hill Homecoming. Leave a comment to let me know what you think of my changes, or maybe what changes you would want to implement in Silent Hill Homecoming story. I appreciate you guys watching the video, and I'll catch you next time.